What is going on guys? So in an unexpected announcement today, Apple just dropped iOS 18.1 beta 5. Uh, and Monday release is pretty uncommon actually for Apple to do with their software. Traditionally it's always Tuesdays, barring some intermittent uh, Mondays mixed in, but not for a beta 5 and not so close after a release of a new iPhone. Having said that, either way, this is only going to be more so improving the bugs and stability of the iPhone from iOS 18.1. Traditionally, four or five, six betas in, we're not getting a ton of new features, although they did have some tweaking from the prior beta four. Let's go ahead, jump into beta five, and what I'm very curious about is this is actually our first software update we're getting on the 16 Pro Max to actually see how the new thermal management does for an update. Let's jump into it. So iOS 18.1 beta five just finished installing here, and as you can see, all complete, it's time to do that temp check for the first time on the 16 Pro Max and yeah, it's still getting hot unfortunately. It is definitely a little improved. Nope, I take that back. Now we're back in the 109s, 106 ranges. Um, so that's kind of concerning. That thermal management system and it's definitely warm to the touch was supposed to be doing a much better job with the new iPhone 16 series. Clearly, for some reason, that is not the case here. Uh, I wonder what's going on with that. It's a little concerning, but we'll have to do a little bit more digging on that. As far as jumping into settings, general, and about 18.1 beta 5 has an e-build, as you can see here, with a full build number of 22B5054E. We are continuing to head in the right direction. Obviously, we're assuming this to get released at some point in October. I'd venture to say the middle to end, but that is just a guess at the moment. This file did come in pretty largely at 1.06 gigabytes, uh, pretty big for a fifth beta, considering there just usually is bug fixes in this build. Aside from that, one thing we really don't need to check out too much or spend too much time on yet is obviously battery life in this new phone because obviously, well, it just has not been really pushed to the test yet. So scrolling around, obviously you can see we have four cycle counts already on this at 100%. It'll be interesting over the year to see just how quickly the cycle count increases and our max capacity decreases, but that's not here nor there. Just as a quick recap as well, in the prior betas, we did get the option now to restore the iPhone 16 with a nearby device. We have Siri suggestions when you type for Siri. So when you double tap down here and you start typing in uh, anything like that, you'll get suggestions. As you can see, ESPN just popped up. That was a newer feature that was added. You can also hop into videos now. And if you are going to be shooting a video, you now have that pause option right there as well so you don't have to stop speaking or stop recording and have everything on a single video file. You do also have in the camera the option for spatial photos as well. Again, this is all that was in the prior build. As you can see here as well, no new splash screen from the camera app. Let's jump into the app store to see if we get anything new here. It's not looking like we are. Let's go to the stocks app and just jump around. Everything is running pretty smoothly, which is definitely nice to see. Again, that is exactly what I'm really thinking this whole build will entail. What I want to do here too is also show you one of the other features that's ex exclusive to the 15 Pro and 16 series devices. It's going to be cleanup where you can delete anything around it once you have downloaded the cleanup tool. It does take a few minutes. I was curious to see if this would have improved a little bit, and it looks like it actually got a little quicker, at least in this example. Uh, really not too much to delete here, but let's just highlight something and see how long it takes to process. So you can see it's still taking a significant amount of time to do that, but nothing too concerning at all. Again, hopefully that will be sped up in the build eventually as well. Aside from that, we are not anticipating anything else new in here yet. Let's give Siri a test to see if that has sped up, but OpenAI is not going to be built in for ChatGTP yet here, uh, so I wouldn't assume any improvements to Siri just yet. How tall is LeBron James? Did he play for the U.S. Olympics basketball team? Who else played for the Olympics basketball team? 
So as you can see, it is actually working very quickly, which is definitely improved from old Siri, but it is still very limited and is not pulling in from anything other than Apple's searches. It is still very hit and miss as far as what it can do. We did have some ongoing issues with that, but no big deal to say the least. One call out that I'm seeing is still a glitch here is some of the apps are still showing as they are uh, not really loading their app logos. We had that the other day as well uh, in the dark mode, which let's actually go ahead and trigger that really quick and see if that's going to happen again. And sure enough, it did right there. So I'm not too sure what's going on with that. I know the app still needs to be re-downloaded. However, it still should show the logo, uh, which is kind of different. Not sure what's going on with that, but they're definitely still missing from here as well. So again, we'll keep this video short and sweet. I'm not finding anything else when we quickly jumped around on this. Uh, I'm assuming that the modem and everything else is still the same in here, but we'll do a little bit more deep dive. I really just wanted to let you guys know it is out here, ready to go and downloadable if you are a registered developer. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.